want a unicorn here. Why are African American men lying on baby mamas? <laughs> Why are they lying? They're like, oh, baby mamas are the worst thing in the world, and you just shouldn't be with them, and single mothers this, and baby mamas that. Baby mamas be in high demand. I have never seen a lonely baby mama in my life. <laughs> you guys, baby mamas be out here with polygyny. They be out here polyamorous in a mug. They be out here with a baby daddy, a boyfriend or fiance, and a work husband. They be out here. <laughs> they be out here good. <laughs> I was um I was having a, a conversation with another content creator about why, you know, baby mamas are getting such bad names and all I can think of is, you know, maybe jealousy of the fact that like some people feel like, okay, well you have a baby, so you should be humble, you know. Kendrick Lamar, sit down, be humble. And these baby mamas be throwing these dudes out. But I'm just like Baby mamas are in such high demand in the black community, even if they're on welfare and Section 8 and WIC. All of those things are assets because these men get with a baby mama. Like, have you ever seen a bachelor pad where, like, a man is living somewhere? He's got a fork, a spoon, a bowl, a plate, a cup. Um, he, he's got a really uncomfortable couch for a good price. He's got curtains that are too short to cover the entire window. Like just no interior design, no comforts. He might have his Wii, his PS5 and his TV on a glass table somebody gave him for free and, and none of the furniture goes or matches or anything. And, you know, he's not even got carpets on the floor. Enter baby mama, okay? <laughs> With all of her beautiful $200 blackout panel curtains, with all of the soft plush rugs so she can put the kids on the floor so they can crawl and play, play pins, cushions, pillows, curtains, comforters, throw blankets, throw rugs, all kinds of dishes and Tupperware, all kinds of food because baby has to be fed, all kind of juicy juice, coffee so she could get up in the morning, you know, just, just all kind of stuff going on. Wi-Fi good. <laughs> Wi-Fi fast. <laughs> okay. Men will come over and be like, man, I got to put a baby in it. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> they don't want to leave. But online, they're talking crazy about baby mamas. Like they're the worst people to be with. And I'm just like, I can't think of women who are more in demand. It's to the point when I was an undergrad, me and some of the girls I was an undergrad with, you know, we were, we were good girls. You know, we were goody two shoes. We were singled in a mug, but our peers who were, or not necessarily our peers, but like in our age group who weren't single, who had their choice, baby mamas. I don't know, like, like maybe men feel like baby mamas are e easier to approach because they have kids or whatever, but like these guys would be out here just, baby mama's phones be full. Their text messages their dms like even the baby mamas on instagram who are Insta instagram models or single mothers uh, in high demand i mean they've gotten rings and all kinds of and all kinds of things from your favorite celebrities don't get me started on bernice burgos we don't want to go there with bernice and drake and then again with bernice and ti we we, we don't want to do that what sense does that make right <laughs> you guys these men get with these baby mamas and get inside of their houses and be like, oh, I want to see what that be like. I want, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> they be so excited. I mean, they're like, ah, oh, she ain't gonna never lose her house, man. It's section eight. She don't even pay rent for this mug. She, all she got to pay is $20 from her part-time job. This is great. We're never getting evicted. We're never getting thrown out. Oh my goodness. What's stability for, you know, my hobosexual self? And, and, and then, you know, she's got food stamps for her kids. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to go hungry. You know, them stamps come in on the ninth of every month. I'm trying to see what that do, you know, uh, uh, WIC, you know, uh, women, infants and children or whatever that's called. Um, 
where, you know, you, you get milk and cereal and some other stuff. And, you know, these men love to get big old bowls of cereal with a bunch of milk and leave the uh, the cereal box on the table with them as they play their little PS5 and whatnot. They be so happy with baby mamas. It's to the point where, like, you'll see a baby mama with four kids and four dads and you're looking at her like, how did that happen? You're looking at her like, how did that happen? But all these men wanted to put a baby in her. All of them. <laughs> they wanted to be attached. They're like, like they, they want to do the hood, you know, the hood marriage, the, the hood attachment to where, you know, if I ever fall on hard times, all I got to do is pretend like I want my family back and like I want to give my family another try. And then, you know, bada bing, bada boom, I'm no longer homeless. Why are we lying on baby mamas? Like nobody wants them. These women are in high demand. These baby mamas that are RNs, these nurse baby mamas are out here. These lawyer baby mamas are out here. These doctor baby mamas are out here. Good. And I and I, I don't even have to start there. I, I mean, stop there because even at Hooters, like these baby mamas. And let's talk about how black men like what labor and delivery does to a woman's body. I became so much more feminine after labor and delivery. I did not get hips, right? Remember, I was a track, I was a track runner, right? So I, I had a track body. I, I was, you know, flat stomach. Like, like my body was straight like a ruler. Now, of course, I had the big, you know, plump butt and, and like boobs, right? But like, as far as like curving like an hourglass, my body never did that until I got pregnant for the first time. It never did that. And it got to the point like I got so weak because my my bones were actually turning, right? My hips were actually turning out, making that, you know, that um, that place in your sacral area um, that's that's near your um, your coccyx um, spread out to prepare for the baby's head, right? I got hips from that. I got curves from that. I was like a double or triple D before. I wear a size G bra now from that. These men like mom bodies. They do. Some of these moms, you know, they might have like, um, like loose skin, but they don't necessarily have tummy fat. Now, I'm obviously not talking about a 300 pound girl who's 4'11", who I'm not talking about that kind of mom body, right? Like, like, don't hold me for that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Boobs that look like they're lactating, child bearing hips with a, with a small waist. That's fertility. You guys see these ancient fertility statues? They be thick. <laughs> they be so thick. <laughs> and then literally made statues out of these things, you know, playing in the dirt and in the mud, you know, <laughs> molding a fertility statue. <laughs> and it's a big girl. <laughs> it's a it's a big girl you know so i'm just like why are we why are we not telling the truth why are we acting like y'all really aren't that afraid to stretch marks you know you really you're really not y'all really aren't all that afraid of you know the 20 extra pounds she put on from you know because before you know she didn't have no booty or no hips and now she got it and let's not even get started on the boobs because I'm like, pfft, y'all, y'all. I mean, you got new boobs, like, like, just like, let's say somebody has just gotten done going through puberty. Maybe they're like, you know, 18, 19, and they're just done with puberty. I, I would consider those new boobs because I'm obviously not talking like you. I'm not talking about 12 year old women training bra, you, but like 19, 20 year old boobs where they, where they did those boobs just got there. <laughs> you got, um, yeah, you got boobs that just got there. And then you have adult boobs, right? You know, 25, 30. And then you've got mom boobs. I'm seeing men flip out over mom boobs. Case in point, what I have on my chest, I do not have, oh, I'm just in adult boobs. 
I do not have these as brand new boobs. I just got them. I do not have, you know, breast implant. Like there's a look for, for breast implants, right? Amazing if you want to wear shirts without a bra, you know, things that are backless, strapless, whatever, you know, because they're obviously going to sit up. But when you take that off, you know, they're scars. But mom boobs, bro? People are risking it all for mom boobs. <laughs> And I wouldn't, I would, hey, I'm just speaking for experience because I've got the mom boobs. I, that, that, that's all, that's what's going on here. It's, it's the, it's the MILF thing. It's, it's the MILF thing for sure. There's a reason MILF is an acronym. There's a reason it's a word. It, it, it wasn't just for Stifler's mom from American Pie. Like, like it's a whole uh, pornographic genre. So when these people are going so hard on baby moms, I'm like, what baby mom hurt you? What baby mom put you out and replaced you? And I'm like, think, think of these kids with, with these different dads. I'm like, the, the men all agreed. So many men wanted these babies. And I don't want to get into like too many anecdotal like evidence because I got stories on stories on stories, but family and friends sometimes watch these videos and I don't want somebody to be like, you was talking about me, but I'm like, girl, some of these, some of these women walking around with one kid and a guy comes around and he's trying to get you pregnant. He's trying to get you pregnant in the, in the third or fourth month of being in a relationship. Right? So... This whole thing, this war on single moms and baby mamas, I don't understand it because these are the most occupied women that I know of. There's a lot of college girls who are single. There's a lot of church girls who are single. There's a lot of women who don't have kids. And it's just, I mean, I remember even, what's that guy's name? Carlos Miller. He was making fun of some of some woman in a crowd. He was like, how old are you? She was like, you know, 31. And he was like, how many kids you got? And she was like, I don't, you know? And she was proud of herself. And then he clowned her. He was like, damn, don't nobody believe in you? She, I can't get with you like that, man. And everybody started laughing because he was like, you know, you, you ought to have a kid by now. And I'm just like, first of all, she should be proud of the fact that it's, you know, no wedding, no womb. She should be proud of the fact that, you know, she's, she's doing it the right way. She's not entering her child into, you know, struggle, struggle lives, struggle, you know, whatever, like, like she wants to do it right. And I've met women who have had, and and hear me out because it's not like I encourage this, but I've definitely met women who are like, you know, I didn't have my first kid until I was 36, didn't have my next son until I was 38. And honestly, you know, like their, their kids were born into good circumstances. They were born into stable homes that were paid for. They weren't renters. They were able to spend their money on their kids and on private school and on raising them correctly, on nannies and on field trips and on international excursions, you know, visiting, you know, other countries during the summer because they waited until they were married and financially stable. I mean, Michael Jackson said, if you can't feed the baby, yeah, yeah, then don't have a baby. Yeah, yeah. And don't think maybe, yeah, yeah, if you can't feed the baby, right? (laughs) you'll be always uh, trying to stop that kid from crying hustling stealing lying now baby slowly dying so shout out to women who are over 30 and who are just like yeah you know I'm not nobody's baby mama because that's not supposed to be something that you brag about that's not like hi you know I'm I'm a haver of illegitimate children whoop-de-whoop-de-whoop right but he shamed her for that because men really rock hard with baby mamas y'all y'all love baby mamas y'all really do and it's like a baby mama sometimes is quicker to have another kid (laughs) than a woman without kids is is quicker to get pregnant then baby mamas usually aren't just a mother of one kid okay now, I know my eldest sister is, and that's because, I mean, she, I do believe that it was because she was married and she had her kid in wedlock and, you know, childbearing was associated with wedlock, blah, 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 right? But, like, honestly, baby mamas be out here with, like, you know, three, four kids, three baby daddies because y'all love them. 
Y'all can't stay out of them. You can't stay out of their bodies. You can't stay out of their houses. Why are you lying? Why, why are you lying? Why are you putting them down? I, I don't get it. These nurse baby mamas out here, bro. <laughs> They're A1 in our community. <laughs> A1. Everybody wants one. People are like, yeah, man. like there, there are memes and TikToks and all kind of social media jokes about dating nurses and how they're so freaky and how they're so good in bed and how they will ruin your life. And they all be out here with like one or two kids by one or two men. And forgive me, not all of them, but I'm just saying like it's a it's a trend like like freaks and scrubs, women and scrubs who got, you know, them kids or whatever. Like it, it, we, we see you. We, we, we see you out here living the good life because i mean sis be polyamorous or 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 polygynous sis be out here with, with options <laughs> she's sleeping with her work husband she's sleeping with her baby daddy she's sleeping with her boyfriend and broke up with him got engaged like like she got options she's never alone that is not a lonely woman she can go to her grave never having married she's never going to be alone Stop playing with these baby mamas. <laughs> Quit playing. Y'all lying. Y'all lying. Stop lying.